Hello everyone and thanks for joining today's webinar. My name is Kalpesh Doshi and I'm the Director of Product at BrowStack. With me, I have Lalit, who is the Senior Product Manager for App Testing Products at BrowStack. Hi everyone. Great, so before we begin, uh, I need to call out a few housekeeping items. We are recording this webinar and we'll be sharing the link with you after this webinar. We'll also be taking up questions at the end of this webinar. So please ask your questions using the Q&A button in the Zoom interface. And also, please feel free to tweet while the webinar is on and do use the hashtag shipappsnotbugs. You can see the hashtag on the screen as well. So with that out of the way, let's begin. This is going to be our agenda for today. Majorly, we want to focus on the importance of app testing, its challenges, and the ways to overcome them. We will be covering best practices along the way. So before we begin, let me quickly spend a few seconds to talk about BrowStack. BrowStack was founded in 2011. Our founders were developers themselves, but they were very frustrated with the inability to test their code on IE, as they both used MacBooks for the development. And that's where the BrowStack was born. Eight years in, BrowStack is industry's most reliable cloud testing platform for websites and mobile apps. It's been used by 2 million users across 135 countries and more than 2 billion test commands and about 60 million tests are executed per month on our platform. Our vision is to be the testing infrastructure for internet. Rostec is a privately held company with offices in San Francisco, Dublin, and Mumbai. And two of our core values are to stay lean and to solve real world problems. Today, BrowStack is trusted by world's best companies from various sectors, like you can see Twitter, Microsoft, MasterCard, Levi, Barclay, and the list goes on. We also power the most prestigious open source projects like jQuery, AngularJS, Zerg Foundation, Discourse, and many more. If you have an open source project and need to test it, we are accepting applications for sponsorship at browsetech.com slash open hyphen source. So give us a shout out. We have four products on BrowStack Cloud Platform, which includes, which includes mobile and web testing. Our live product lets you interactively test and debug the functionality of websites in desktop and mobile browsers, just like you would do on your personal computer, smartphones, or tablet. Except that with BrowStack, you can test on over 2,000 plus combinations of real devices, browsers, and operating system in the cloud. With Automate product, you can run your Selenium test for your websites on our infrastructure. Um, Automate also allows you to run tests in parallel across a wide range of browsers, thereby speeding up your releases. The third product in our product suite, which was released just two years back, is AppLive. Now, just like Live, AppLive offers interactive testing, but for native and hybrid mobile apps. And last but not the least, App Automate, which was launched just last year, that is in June 2018, lets you run your automated test for native and hybrid mobile apps. Now, with App Automate, you can run your test using APM, Espresso, XUI test, and Earl Grey frameworks. Now, shifting gears to today's topic. Why app testing? Now, this is where I will hand off to Lalit, who will deep dive into this. So, Lalit, over to you. Thanks, Kilpesh. Thanks, everyone, for joining. So, let's try to understand why app testing is so critical. In general, the success of an app is never guaranteed. In Play Store itself, there are about 2.6 million apps out of which 1.2 million apps never ever receive any user rating. Only 200,000 apps have received more than 50K downloads, which is just about 8% of the total number of apps. The story is similar for iOS apps as well. The reality is 30% of users uninstall apps within the first four weeks. This tells us that users are spoiled with options. They expect high quality experience, and if the app falls short of that, it ends up getting uninstalled. And for the poor quality and poorly tested apps, user response is very drastic. For example, 
76% users uninstall an app if it freezes more than once. 40% users leave an app that has launching issues. And 60% users quit app due to visual errors. These stats emphasize the importance of having a strong plan for quality assurance of your apps. But what makes testing that difficult? There are a number of reasons and we're going to highlight a few key ones. First, accessibility to real devices is not easy. And spinning up an internal device lab is not only expensive, it takes up a lot of time and effort to maintain and use. Which is when companies often start testing on emulators or simulators. But testing on emulators or simulators can make you blindsided to a lot of bugs and performance issues within your app. Emulators don't carry the real hardware and sensors as a real device would. The device manufacturer also modifies the operating system. And in some cases, the emulator itself may have bugs. Testing on emulator will never give you the confidence that the app will work without issues for end users. Secondly, the device market is highly fragmented. There are about 10,000 varieties of smartphones from 114 different device manufacturers. Even though app development teams want to test their apps on multiple possible combination of devices and OSs that their customers use, it has become practically impossible to do so. This pain is going to further increase with the advent of IoT devices like wearables, smartwatches, home assistants, etc. Third, people are unable to test like users. Our users may access the app from different locations across the globe. It's very important to make sure that the app continues to work for them. There are different network conditions which may not be ideal when you and same too as and when you are testing from the office. The device settings that these users may have may not be the one that you've tested for. Other apps on the phone may also cause interruptions that you may not have covered for when you were testing the app. Behavior of the app to the end user can be quite unexpected in all these different conditions. Lastly, it is a highly competitive market. Faster releases and time to market have become very important to always stay ahead of the competition. We all want to release faster than before. This leads to faster testing cycles, which not all companies are able to achieve. Lack of resources, lack of tools, high complexity, all can lead to a poorly tested app getting to production. But as developers, we all want to deliver awesome apps. Let's try to understand why these problems are important to solve and possible solutions. Testing on real devices. Why test on real devices? It has been established that emulators and simulators do not give results with the same accuracy as real devices. Chances of false positives are extremely high with emulators and simulators, which will surely have a negative impact on the business ROI. Another disadvantage of the emulators is that you will still not be able to test all features of your apps because it's not an actual device. In effect, you will never be confident how your app behaves or those features. So while emulator may seem to be a cheaper option, they might prove to be a very expensive option in the long run from a business perspective. So what devices should I be testing on? It is obviously neither practical nor recommended for you to test on every device just because you can. This is where it goes a long, long way for you to completely understand your users. A great way to find out is your analytics tool and understand what are the devices that they are using. While testing on devices most commonly used by these users is important, it is also important to optimize your device list to make sure that your works, app works seamlessly for other users as well. You'll need to make sure compatibility with older OS versions. For example, in case of Android, all users or a majority of users don't update when a major OS version is upgraded. Hence, you may still want to continue testing on Android 5, Android 6. Making sure that the UI doesn't break for all different screen sizes is equally important. 
So your device list needs to have a mix of tablets, phones with smaller screen sizes and larger screen sizes as well. Sometimes issues may be specific to low end devices or device manufacturers. So your device list needs to make sure and balance all these different criteria and challenges based on your business needs. Now, how to get started with testing on real devices? There are two ways to do it. Either you can create your own device lab, which is probably okay when you are just a startup, but it is going to end up being a very expensive affair. Looking at the cost of establishing a lab and maintaining it in house. Or you opt for a cloud service like browser stack. Browser stack offers 2000 plus devices and OS combinations that will allow you to ensure high coverage of your customer market. We only offer real devices because they give the most accurate test results. The best part is our real devices are always available for testing, almost no wait time. For live interactive app testing, it's as easy as logging on and starting to test. For automation, you can run parallel tests on hundreds of different devices. So earlier we spoke about how unexpected issues may happen due to varying end user conditions. Here's a question for you. Do you know how your app behaves when a user is riding a subway or riding up to his or her office in the elevator? Users are going to end up having different network conditions like slow networks, network is choppy or high latency. You would want to test how your app behaves in all these different network scenarios. Another example, if your app requires device location, your test plan needs to cover and test from different locations so as to cover all the possible scenarios. You would also want to test how your app behaves if the user has different device settings, such as device language and time zone. So in combination, all these are some of the critical scenarios, which if not tested properly, could break your app and end up hampering and giving a poor experience to your customers. Now, while sitting in your development center, it is difficult to simulate all these conditions on real devices. This is where browser stack comes into picture. Browser stack provides a, a way to simulate most, if not all the real world conditions. Let's take a look at some of them right now. I'm going to open the app live dashboard. While most of you may already be familiar with the dashboard, for those users who are seeing it for the first time, here is a quick intro to get you started. On the left side, you need to select the app you want to test. You can either directly upload or you can test using our integration with beta distribution, distribution tools, such as test flight, app center, and hockey app. On the right side is a list of real Android and iOS devices that you can choose from. So let's start a session. I'll select a sample app. I'll choose Wikipedia app and let me choose from devices which has options for Samsung devices and Google devices. So let's start a session on Pixel 8. So this, as you can see, the loading screen is happening. Our real device in our data center is being connected to the browser. So this is the session screen which has loaded now. Besides being able to interact with the device, we have an additional capabilities to enhance your testing and debugging processes. Starting from the top is in functionality to capture issues as you find them. Our integrations with bug reporting tools such as Jira, Trello, Slack, and GitHub allow you to directly report these issues from the session itself, just from this screen. On the right side, is the dev tool section. You can find device logs, inspect layout hierarchy, or view network requests and responses with detailed information and also debug them in real time. All of this without any additional setup. Then 
there is a floating toolbar on the right side, which allows you to quickly test for different user scenarios. Let's try to test some of them out. We see rotate device, which allows you to switch to a portrait mode and landscape mode. There's option to install app, kill all app processes. Let's give throttle network a try. Right now we saw app being launched with the normal speed. As I click on throttle network, I see a list of preset popular profiles. Let me choose 2G speed and see, does my app launch properly? Now the network conditions have been applied. I'm going to kill the app and launch again. As you can see, because the network speed is slow, the resources are taking time to load, but the Wikipedia app seems to be handling this gracefully with the loader. If there were an issue, I could simply switch to a network tab and also understand if there was an issue or a request that was failing or timing out. Let's switch back to the same network speed. Let's try another scenario and see how the app appears for a user from China. Click on change language. I select Chinese simplified and click apply. Now as these settings have been applied, you can see the app UI is updated. And as we scroll, we see those labels and date format being updated and seems like the UI is not breaking. Other than this, on the floating toolbar, there are other options such as change location. Change location allows you to sim simulate the device GPS location and IP geo location and test your location based scenarios. So these were a few examples of how while testing, we can test for end user cases and capture some of those issues that end up hampering the overall experience. I'm going to switch back to a presentation. Moving on to the next problem, which is how to cover all your test cases without losing the speed of your releases. And the answer to this is automation. This is where I will hand off to Kalpesh again to give some insight into how automation can be used to speed up your test. Great, thank you so much Lalit. Thanks for the context. All right guys, so the first question is why automate at all, right? Now the answers are very simple. One is speed and second is reliability. Now think about this, an average app size, there are about 200 to 500 test cases. And let's say those needs to be executed on at least 10 popular devices. Most of the organizations kind of have at least a list of 10 devices on which they want to test their apps on. So which makes to about 2000 to 5000 test cases. Now think about, uh, now think about testing them uh, manually, it's practically impossible. The chances of manual errors are extremely high. And this is why automation is so important. This will not only make releases faster and reduces human effort, but it will also give most reliable results. Now, while, while automating, the biggest question arises is what is the right framework to use? If you are already automating your test, then you must be using one or the other framework for app automation. But if you are not started your aut automation yet, it's very important to understand which framework to use based on your team structure, skills, and bandwidth. Now, these are the most, four most popular frameworks used worldwide for app automation. And by the way, BrowseTech supports all, four, all these four frameworks. The first one is APM. So APM, as most of you might know, is an open source test automation framework to test native, hybrid, and mobile web apps. For those who are familiar with Selenium, APM is nothing but Selenium with added mobile capabilities. And just like Selenium, APM also works on a client server architecture with WebDriver. So why use APM for automation? There are two reasons. 
One, let's say your QA team is central, which writes automation for both Android and iOS. Then with APM or using APM, they can write tests only once and then make it work for both iOS and Android. So it saves a lot of time and effort for your team. Second reason, automation engineers does not need to learn any new language or framework if they write tests in APM. The reason being APM supports most of the languages and frameworks out there for automation. So let's say if your test automation engineer knows Python or Ruby or any other language or framework, they can just use that, write the test in that language and make it work with APM. Now coming to Espresso and XUI test, these are the native frameworks developed by Google and Apple for Android and iOS respectively. Now why would someone choose these frameworks over APM? Number one reason is speed. Unlike APM, which is a client server architecture, wherein your tests are triggered from, your, from the client machine and commands are sent over to the server, Espresso and XUI test directly executes on the devices, which makes its execution significantly fast. And not only that, the tests are more stable compared to APM because unlike APM, the tests are not going over the network. However, the disadvantage over APM is teams have to write tests differently for Android and iOS and in different languages. For example, for Espresso, which supports Java and XUI test, you have to write it in Swift or C Sharp, which increases the effort. And also, if the skills are not there with the team, they will have to develop those skills. Though most matured organizations are moving towards a native framework, APM still stands to be the most popular ones because of the advantages that I mentioned previously. Earl Grey is the fourth framework, which is developed by Google for iOS testing. So just like Espresso for Android, they have developed Earl Grey for iOS testing, and it holds the same advantages and disadvantages as Espresso and XUI test. So while choosing the framework, you need to consider all these points, depending on your team skills and depending on the effort that will be needed, you need to choose uh, wisely what framework is fit for your organization. So now the question is whether you can automate all the real world scenarios that you just saw uh, in the app live demo. Answer is yes. With automate, you can simulate all those scenarios and we have provided capabilities for simulating different scenarios. For example, if you want to set your device's GPS to some latitude or longitude, you can use browsetag.gps location capability. You can also change your device's IP using the geolocation capability. You can set your device to any network profile, we have a few profiles created and you can also create your own custom profile in order to test. You can test the time zone by changing the time zone. You can change the device's language, locale and pretty much everything that you just saw with App Live, you can do it with the App Automate as well. So let's see some of these in action on how to test App Automate using APM and we can see one of the real world scenarios as well. So let's say if you already have a browse tag account, you will, be, you will be landing on the app automate dashboard using app-automate.browsetag.com. Here you can get your access, username and the access key. You will see the parallel threads that your account has. And in the left side, you will also be able to see uh, the bills and the sessions that you must have executed. Now let's say if you want to run your app automate test, the first thing you will need to do is upload your app onto the browse tag servers. Now in order to do that, we have provided a curl command, which will allow you to post your app onto the browse tag server. All you need to do is update your username and access key. Now in response, you will get the app URL, which is a unique identifier of the app. You just need to copy the app URL and go to your code. So now here, what I've shown is the setup of a test ng, simple test ng setup, uh, which will be used to execute the APM test. So all I need to do is with the app URL, I need to update the app capability and replace it with the app URL. And also update the hub URL to point to browse tag, hub.browsetech.com and update my username and access key and execute the test. As soon as you execute the test, as you can see, the test appears on the dashboard and starts executing. Once the execution is complete, you'll be able to see the session details of that particular test. Here you can see the test status 
the session ID, which is a unique identifier to that session, the duration of the test. You'll also be able to see the app details, the input capabilities that you must have entered along with the test and some that BrowseTech passes inherently, and the device capability that BrowseTech pass based on the devices that you used. We also provide the bunch of logs for you to be able to debug your test effectively. So for example, video will show you the entire test run for that particular session. We have also provided the text logs in which you can see each and every step of your test execution. Here, if you have an exception, you will also see the exceptions in the text logs. The visual logs show you the screenshots of each and every critical page of your app. You can also take the screenshot of your own. The network logs will show you will tell you the ne network related calls for that particular test. Now this is this had been disabled for this test, but if to enable the network logs, you have to use the capability network logs equal to true. We also provide the raw APM logs and the raw device logs for you to be able to debug any kind of exception. And lastly, we also have the app profiling, which will tell you the device's CPU, memory, battery, and network when the app is being tested or that particular flow is being tested. So that was just one test. Now let's say if you want to run the same test on multiple devices in parallel, all you need to do is change your test engine configuration and have multiple devices in that. So let's say I have Galaxy S9 and Pixel and just execute the test. Now, if you go to the dashboard, you will see that same test is being executed in parallel on two different devices, Galaxy S9 and Pixel, which was selected. Now, let's say you want to um, change the device's language. So all you need to do is add a language capability. And let's say in this case, I'm adding French as a language. And just execute the test. OK, the test has shown up in the dashboard. So once the test execution completes, this is how the result will look like. Now, I haven't changed my test. All I've done is change the language. And you can see that the search Wikipedia has changed into the French language. Now my test is actually searching for the English word. And that's the reason it is not matching and failing. So that gives a very good a test for your app, whether it's changing effectively or not changing. So that's all for the demo. So now the burning question may be, do I need to perform manual testing when I have an automation? The answer is still yes. Manual testing is inevitable. In general, automation will never cover 100% test cases. Most mature, mature organizations have achieved up to 75% of automation. In addition to that, Exploratory testing and usability testing are feasible only with manual testing, while automated testing is suited for functional regression, performance, and load testing. Also, manual testing is suited if you want to reproduce a production bug on specific device type or an OS combination, or perform a manual visual testing of the app. So it's important for any organization to strike equal balance between manual and auto automation testing, as both are equally important to shape quality products. With this, we have a question for you all. If you need any help with automating your tests or scaling your test suite, or in general have questions about any of our products, we will have an expert from our customer success team reach out to you. So please answer the question that you, you are seeing on the uh, screen right now. Great, with this, we will take a few questions. So while, the, while you guys type in the questions, I want to make one important call out. One of our users, Priyanka Halder, who heads QA at GoodRx, gave this amazing talk at our recent San Francisco meetup on how to build a completely automated QA stack from scratch. The talk was so well received that we are hosting Priyanka again for a webinar. And she will also be showing demo of GoodRx's QA stack that includes tools like Jenkins, CircleCI, Apply Tools, and of course, BrowStack. So we are sharing a link to register in the chat window. 
So do please sign up. We are also recording the webinar. So even if you can't make it, do register and we will send you the recording post webinar. So with that, we are taking the question. All right, so the first question we have is uh, regarding the App Center. Do we, send, uh, do we support App Center? Yeah, the answer is yes. We support App Center for, uh, for both App Live and the App Automate product. Another question is, where are the devices located? So currently we have uh, three data centers. Uh, we have one in Sacramento uh, uh, in the US West, one in the US East, and we have one data center in Dublin. In coming months, we are going to launch three more data centers uh, in Asia Pacific and Asia Oceanic region. So uh, that's where all of our devices are going to be hosted. Another question, are these real devices or emulators? So we have all the real devices. So at Rostec, we believe that the testing, we believe at the testing accuracy and real devices gives the most accurate results compared to simulators or emulators. So all the devices that we have or you saw are all real devices. Another question is, is there a way to use network throttle in automation mode? Yes. So as, as you saw uh, in one of the previous slides, there is a capability to do that. You have browsed, you can add browsetag.network profile capability and you can use any of the uh, profiles in order to test that. One more question, can you automate user gestures like Zoom? Yes, so anything that this testing framework support, we support, like APM, you can use Zoom, Pinch, you can swipe, swipe up and down, so everything that is supported using the frameworks, you can support, uh, is supported in Browse Stack as well. One more question, can we hold on to a particular device or is any device type always guaranteed to be available? So the answer is, um, this is a shared cloud, right? So it's not like that the, you can hold to a particular device, but the device is available on demand. So as you fire a test, we make the next device available to you. And we have maintained the capacity enough that no one had an issue with getting the device when demanded. Another question we have, do you offer performance testing for apps? So currently, as you saw that we provide some sort of app profiling, wherein you can see the apps performance in terms of the, in terms of the devices, CPU, battery, memory. Uh, we, are, we have a performance testing in the roadmap for the apps, like a full-blown performance testing. So you should see it in coming months. We have one more question. Is it possible to emulate device load in Browse Stack as well? Like when there are other apps running in the background, taking up resources. So at this point, that is not possible. And we understand that, yes, that, that is another real world scenarios. Like you want to test when the device is loaded with multiple apps and another app may interrupt your app uh, functionality. So that, is in the roadmap, but it's not available at this point. So we are, as we, as we speak, we are working on covering all the real world scenarios that is possible on Browse Stack. 
Another question, do you have CI, CI integration? Yes, we have CI integrations uh, for APM, Espresso, XUI test, and Ulgrade, uh, all of them. So for APM, we have integration with Jenkins, Bamboo, Circle CI. Um, and for Espresso, we have provided the Gradle plugin. One more question that we have is, uh, is our app secured? Like, is it like that someone will be able to access the app after my session is complete? So yes, your app is completely secured. At BrowseStack, we clean up the device after the session is complete, after each and every session is complete. And whenever a device is offered to a new user, it's completely in a pristine state. Another question, can you export logs from the test? Yes, you can export all your logs. So we have, uh, we have an ability, uh, you have an ability to download the logs from the test session itself. In addition to that, we have provided REST APIs, which will allow you to download all the logs, videos, and everything related to the test. Another question that we have, what do you prefer for beginner freelancer, manual or automation and browser or devices? So here's the recommendation. As a beginner freelancer, depending on the client you are working with, you need to kind of um, manage your tests as well. And again, depending on the deadlines as well with the client that you have, either you might choose for manual or, uh, or you might choose for the automation. So again, it depends. As I said, that manual and automation both are equally important, right? So even if you do manual testing, it is good to have some sort of automation built for at least your P1 cases so that every time you make a release, you have to kind of regress it against those P1 cases. One more question that we have, we need to access an external server hosted API for testing complete features. Is that possible? Yes, we have a local testing feature wherein you will be able to test uh, your app, which is running on your internal server against the browse tag. So the local testing will open up a tunnel between the browse tag and your internal server, and you will be able to run your test against that. One more question, can I test production apps? Yes, absolutely. We have an app store and play store feature wherein you can actually download or install your production app on the browse tag devices and test against those as well. One more question, can we read OTP using App Automate? So we are currently doing a POC on that one, wherein you will be able to get the inbound phone calls using the App Automate. Um, so at this point, it's still in the POC stage, wherein we are working on it. Uh, but yes, soon you should be able to see that.
Another question is, do you have integration with the project management tools like Jira or Trello or anything? Yes, we do have integration with the major project management tools like Jira, Trello, Slack, and GitHub so that you can, you can file the bugs either from the app live or the app automate directly into your project management tool. One more question, how many devices we can execute in parallel for App Automate and how stable it is? So the devices that you can spawn in parallel depends on your uh, plan. So if you have a 10 parallel plan, you can run all 10 parallel on one device. Now for the higher number of parallels, there are certain tier limits that we have offered on the devices. Uh, based on that, you can access the devices. Now the browse stack stability, I mean, the, the browse stack is extremely stable. We haven't had uh, any issues with the stability. One more question, does the test automation work with web-based apps? Yes, the test automation works with web-based apps as well. Um, and by web-based, if you mean the hybrid app, yes, hybrid apps are supported, native apps are supported as well and the web apps are supported as well using our automate product. Great, so um, that's all the questions we'll be taking as of now. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I must have unanswered some of the questions that you might have. But we will again look at the entire list of questions and send you an email if certain question stays unanswered. We have the recording of this webinar, so we'll be sharing that with you in a couple of days. If we didn't, so thanks a lot for joining us today. We appreciate you taking time off and joining us. So until next webinar, it's Kalpesh signing off. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you.